Thanks so much for staying with us on At The Post Live. I'm very excited to have my next guest here. I'm sure many of you know Ian Wilkes. Ian, a man deserving of much applause. Um, Ian, of course, has McCracken in the Travers this weekend, and we'll talk about him, but it's, it's good to see you. How have you been? Good, thanks, Andy. Um, how's Saratoga treating you? Good, I'll tell you after Saturday. Saturday's sort of the whole pivotal week, the meet, right? Yeah, it makes the meet. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's not, it's not as though the whole, I mean, you went to Monmouth, obviously, and took a tough beat, but you were second in the Haskell, which isn't really bad. It's not as good as winning, though. Yeah, you know, I did everything but win the race. Yeah, you looked like you were going to win. It's tough. Yeah. It's a long stretch. Last time you joined us, you actually were with us the first year we did the show when we were still over at Hattie's, and uh, it was before Fort Learned won the Whitney. And so maybe, hopefully, it will be good luck for you. Yeah, that's, um, you know, I run into Johnny D out the back there, so uh, we had dinner with him before I won the uh, Breeders' Cup Classic. So it was good to see him out there. Did you go to dinner with him tonight? No. Oh, if you'd known. Right? I didn't push the envelope. <laughs> There's always tomorrow night, you know. Um, and, and, and Fort Larned, I mean, he was a, a, obviously a very exciting horse. I mean, even winning the Whitney, but, but winning the Breeders' Cup Classic as well. Yeah, yeah. He's, he was an unbelievable fast horse, could carry his speed for a long distance. And, could, and the biggest strength he had, he could make a 5 8 mile move and take everyone out of the game. That was his strength. Yeah, he, he was obviously very good. And Brian Hernandez, who rode him, also rides McCracken. And you have a long relationship with Brian. Yeah, yeah, Brian's uh, very underrated. I think he's as good as anyone here. You get him on the right horse, he's good. And, and if, now, Fort Lauderdale, is stand, he's standing at stud, right? I haven't seen a lot of his yeah. horses. Yeah, the, the first uh, two-year-olds this year, and he's at Dina. He, he moved to Florida. He was in Kentucky his first year, went to Florida the next two years and he's back at Kentucky this year. And if you get a chance to see him at all? I haven't this year. And, but you've seen him since? Oh yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it fun to sometimes go back and see the horses that you trained before? I mean is that, do you enjoy doing that? Oh definitely, you know you love to go and see them, you like to go out and visit them, you know we went out and see Warriors Reward and, and um, you How's know. How's he doing? Needs a big horse. Yeah he does. Yeah. Yeah. He, was a, he was a terrific horse. Yeah he was good, he was um, just, just a night. He gets a lot of winners, but he just needs that big horse. Yeah, he 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 got very good as a four-year-old as well, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, did, did he win the card or did he lose it by a nose? It he one, won it. He won it, right? It was like in the fog, right? Yeah. He got like foggy. Did Ramon ride him? No, the second Julian. Horse. He rode the second horse, I think. Yeah, he rode Musket Man. Right. Mm -hmm. and Julian Julian rode rode him. Yeah. Yeah, he he was very very good as a four-year-old. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He he got good. He matured. He was he didn't run until. Uh, I think December 31st as a two-year-old. And then he got, you know, he was okay as a three-year-old, solid, but he got better as a four-year-old. Did he run in like the Jim Dandy up here, Warriors Ward? Yeah. I feel like he did. Yeah. He stumbled out of the gates that day. Uh, who, who, God, who, that must have been Musket Man's year, so that must have been, um, uh, mind that, must that 2009? Is that Rachel Alexander's year? No, no. He was later than that. It was later than that? Yeah. Okay. I think, yeah. I, now it's hard to remember. It all, starts to, yeah. it all starts to sort of blend into one. Now you, as many people know, obviously had a long association with Carl Nafsker, and you, you galloped unbridled. Is that true? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to gallop him. That's when I was young and skinny, and I thought I knew what I was doing. And you've subsequently found out, like the rest of us, that you, we never knew as much as we thought we knew. Well, I had, a few, I had a few lessons on the way. <laughs> well, I mean, now, Unbridled's a horse. I think he's, he might be one of those sort of forgotten good horses over the year because, obviously, he won the Derby. He won the Breeders' Cup Classic. He, he was a great sire, sired Unbridled Song, among others. He was a tremendous racehorse. He was. Um, <clears throat> the thing about him, he was, he was unbelievable. He, he was so laid back, and his talent was... if. Probably the best race he ever ran, even though he won the Derby and, and he won the Breeders' Cup Classic, was the race he beat Helps Buster, Seven Furlongs at Gulfstream. was probably the most spectacular race. Yeah, that, that was, I'm thinking of the Tallahassee. What race was that? That was, Tallahassee was a six-sprung race. It, yeah, it, no, it, it's it, a, it was, a, I think it was seven and may have... On the spring mm. chain. I don't remember what they called yeah. it back then. Was it the deputy minister back yeah, then? Yeah, it was the deputy minister. Yeah. And he ran down House Buster. Of course, people yeah. don't remember him. He's one of the best sprinters of the last 50 years. Yeah. Yeah, 
yeah, tremendous. If, um, Pat Day got along with him great. Of course, Craig Brett did when he won the Derby. But uh, the horse had a tremendous turn of foot. And Craig was probably riding Housebuster because he rode Housebuster. He did. He took off and rode Housebuster. Uh, that must have been pretty great, right? <laughs> It's never, never bad at racing sometimes to rub it in, especially when it's your friends. Um, you know, I was thinking about having you on. You know, it's, it, being a trainer, obviously, there's a lot of challenges. What, what is it about racing that sort of keeps you getting up in the morning and doing your job? Good horses. That, that makes it easier. You know, if you got up every morning and looked at um, 5,000 claimers and nothing against them, you, if you can't enjoy a 5,000 claimer winning, you shouldn't be in the game. But when you have nice horses and I've got good owners, I've got tremendous owners it's a pleasure to get up and it's just exciting and two-year-olds i mean is that what that the most thrilling part is the possibility that they offer yeah because you you never you never see a man commit suicide with an unraised two-year-old <laughs> <laughs> now obviously you had a very good two-year-old in your barn named mccracken last year and we're gonna actually have to take a quick break and after the break we're gonna talk a bit with, with ian about mccracken who of course is really one of the major contenders in this Travers. He so. took a little time to sort of get going in the races, but he was maybe as talked about a two-year-old at the end of last year as there was in the country. Yeah, he, he's very precocious. When I finally got him to the races, he, he won like a good thing, which was which is nice. You know, for me to win with a first-time starter is pretty good. Rare. Rare and good. <laughs> and, he, and he won at Churchill, and then he went and won the Kentucky Jockey Club, right? After that, that was his third start. Third star. Won the street sense. It was a which is a nice race to win the street sense. A little overnight stake at Churchill, going a mile, and then we ran him in the jockey club. And and, and he, you know, people do get excited about horses that win at Churchill Downs, obviously for Kentucky Derby. And the street sense, of course, named for a horse that you were very involved with training with Carl Napster as well. Yeah, yeah, he was a good horse. Sort of, sort of reminds you a little bit of this horse, the turn of foot. Street sense had an unbelievable turn of foot and watch McCracken does as well. And, and McCracken, it's interesting watching him run because, you know, he, he has this huge burst and it feels like a timing it properly has been something you have to figure out exactly. Yeah, we've had a little hiccup on the way and he's got an unbelievable turn of foot, this horse, and that, that really helps you in any of these races. When you run against good horses and you can accelerate like that, you can really play it to your advantage. And, and I have the most confidence in Brian He'll get it done. And so on the Triple Crown Trail, obviously, and I had seen you down in Florida, and he was training so well, and he won his first race in the Sam Davis, and then, of course, inevitably, the worry of every trainer going to the barn one morning going, oh, he's not perfect, right? Yeah, yeah. Had a small hiccup. Had a, a slight strain in the ankle. You know, I probably could have ran him. I probably could have ran him at Tampa Bay, but I may not have liked the result. The horse had taken me there, so I, I had to take care of him. And it really put me a little bit behind, had me chasing my tail most of the time. And he came back to the Bluegrass Stakes, and he didn't run badly, but he obviously mm. didn't run as well as he had run in his prior races. Yeah, we, we come back and we, we were just probably come up a fraction short. We were a little too fresh. We were too anxious in the race. The horse left there running too much on the bit. Just never settled into his routine, and, and it really it paid a toll on him at the end there. And the Derby, we were talking about it the other night at the draw. I know that there were a lot of excuses. He got cut up a little bit. But you said to me, there were really no excuses. Yeah, you know, I can make excuses. But we got beat. You know, let's, let's face the fact, uh, always dreaming was the best horse on that day. You know, everyone can go on about the track, how the track was or anything like that, how rough the start was. Come on, we all got in the gates. We all come out there. We all had to have our trip. And we got beat. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, that's something, it's easier to look at it that way as opposed mm -hmm. to saying what could have happened or should have happened because obviously there's always a million ways things could have gone better. Yeah, you, you, could, you could make yourself crazy making excuses, but um, let's face it, you know, I've got a good horse. I believed in him, so I just had to back up, get him ready, and, um, and I just have to, as I said, coming for the second half of the year, I have to let the horse do the talking, not me. And, and the Haskell, I mean... It is, I mean, it must, it, you know, I can only imagine what it's like, obviously, training him and having the horse and you put so much into it because it looked like he was going to win that race until the very, very late stages. Yeah. Not to relive it for you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too much. Yeah. No, I, I thought the horse ran a winning race. He made a big move. He made a strong half-mile move. And I, I felt, and I'm not taking anything away from Durbin. He beat me. Um, I felt my horse idled a little bit down the lane. 
because I thought they were going to run by me and beat me half a length, but he come back and got beat a nose. So I really felt the horse is still learning. It was only his eighth start. I think that he's still catching on what to do when the pressure comes and keep going. When you, like, go to bed at night, do you sit and think how you hope the Travers works out, or do you just sort of think, I just hope he's in front when they hit the wire? (laughs) (laughs) It's funny. You know, he's a horse that, you know, you can... He's always a horse that gives you confidence. He, he instills confidence in you. He, he's taken me here, and I've got the utmost confidence in this horse right now. Do you talk to Brian much about sort of how to ride him, or you just sort of leave him alone and let him figure it out and figure he's good enough? Well, I, I, made, so many, I made a few mistakes through the year by trying to read races and, and picking out, you know, who's the speed, who's not the speed. And I, got, I talked to Brian before the house guy. I said, Brian... I said, you know this horse. I said, you just ride him. I said, trust the horse. That's what we have to get back to is trust the horse. Know his strength, know his weakness, and let the horse do it. If we don't, if we don't do that, we're going to take away everything from him. Do you find sometimes, and I've talked with other, other trainers too, especially with good horses, mm. just don't take them out of their games. And you, sometimes you just have to hope for the best. Yeah, because yeah, you can't take them out of their games. So some days they'll come out and they'll want to be three out of it, four out of it, that's where they want to be. Some days they want to drop six, seven, eight back. Don't, don't take it away. Let them be where they want to be because they know, these good horses know, they're actually quite intelligent. Yeah, well, we, we, we wish you the best of luck with McCrack and, and hopefully the good luck that being on At The Post with us six years ago. And one of the first guests we had in the show, actually, was you. So, Ian, th- thank you so much for joining us and best of luck with McCracken this weekend. Thanks, mate.